I often compare a company's footprint to a backpack. Imagine you're hiking up a steep mountain and you're carrying a heavy backpack, but you don't know what exactly is inside. Some things might be light, like your sleeping bag, and some things might be very he heavy, like a metal toolbox. For me, this is comparable to what your company is doing all the time, carrying a backpack not knowing exactly what's in it. And you can't reduce what you don't measure. And many companies are already setting goals for their sustainability without knowing the weight or the carbon footprint of their backpacks. Today, I will show you my step-by-step -step approach on how to measure the carbon footprint. Today, I'll show you how to exactly define your boundaries, understand your scopes, and start calculating your emissions in a way that's easy, structured, and achievable. Your first step is to draw a line. Where do you set your boundaries? There are two ways to define the boundary. The first one is equity control. You account for all the emissions according to your share of ownership. The second one is operational control. You account for all the carbon emissions that you have operational control over, so even if you don't fully own the sites. Pick one approach and apply it consistently. If you're asking yourself which one to pick, um, this is really depending very much on your organizational structure. If you hold many shares of sites, then it might be better to go for the equity share. If you don't own many sites, but you have the operational control, so you know how to heat it, how to use the electricity and so on, how to operate it, then go for the operational control. And then next, you define your operational boundaries. So which activities are included in your own production, for example, or in your own operations? Is it factories? Is it shipping? Is it what, what is included in your operations of your company? If you don't know where to start, I would suggest you start with your biggest sites first, with, with your biggest, most prominent activities first. Then in the next step, you want to understand your scopes of emissions. The scopes tell you where the emissions come from. So for example, scope one is everything that you basically burn within your company. That is mobile combustion within your company or for your fleet. Um, or it can also be emissions that occur in manufacturing processes. Then scope two is all the emissions from purchased energy. So electricity would fall into this scope as well as for example, district heating. Then scope three is the most complicated one because that is all your emissions along your value chain. Everything that happens around your own business. Everything that happens from purchasing goods, from transporting these to your factory, as well as business travels and product used, end of life scenario and so on and so on. Scope three are usually the biggest emissions and are the most difficult to calculate. I will make a separate video about scope 3 emission calculations. So if you don't want to miss that, I suggest you to subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. So you will get noticed once the video is out. Then step 3 is to calculate the actual emissions. And I will show you how I do that. For scope 1 and 2, it's quite straightforward. I collect all the, for example, fuel bills and um, utility bills, all the consumption data from of the energy that we are consuming for the company. And then I use this data and multiply it with the um, emission factors that are available in databases. For example, one liter of diesel equals 2.68 kilograms of CO2 emissions. For scope three, it's a bit more complicated. I first do an analysis of all the categories that are relevant for us. And here I go along the greenhouse gas protocol and see which of the categories apply to the company that I want to calculate the emissions. And then I collect as much data as I can find. And here it's sometimes really difficult. I can go for the spendings that I have. And this is usually how I start everything. So looking at the spendings that I have for the different categories, then find the emission factors that are fitting to these spendings, the more correct or the more accurate to the industry, the better. And then I make a first overview about which emissions might be my hotspots. And there I can dive deeper into. But uh, yeah, I, I will make a separate video about scope three emissions because that is very time intensive. Overall, the formula for emissions is taking the activity data like kilowatt hours or liters or gallons or anything and multiply it with the 
emission factors that fit to the activity. You can think of it like weighing all the different articles and putting it then into your backpack and in the end you know which article weighs how much and which is the overall weight of your backpack. And then comes step four, which is probably the most important one, because this is analyzing and improving. You first sort all your articles in your backpack according to their weight or according to the carbon emissions, and then you see which ones you can optimize first. And it's always good to start by the biggest amount of carbon emissions and then work towards the smaller amounts. And you can always then judge whether it's easy to um, change something in this process or whether it's more difficult. Sometimes you have an easy way of changing it by just um, shifting into renewable energy. Sometimes it's a bit more complicated and you have to invest in machinery or so on to reduce the emissions. To sum it up, once you know what's in your backpack, you can pack it more wisely, exchange some of the articles inside for lighter versions and then make an easier access to the mountains.